and once it worked and was tuned for particular software and hardware, you didn't change it and you certainly um, didn't try to run it on other <laughs> robots. Um, but with this new intelligent system paradigm, you want to be able to make those changes during the life of the robot. Hey guys, welcome to Embedded Toolbox, the video interview series where we try to save the world by solving one engineering challenge at a time. And we're back with Let's Build a Robot Part 2. And with us, we have Rob Woolley, who is the principal technologist in the technology office at Wind River. How are you doing, Rob? I'm doing well. How are you, Brandon? Doing very well, thanks. So last time we started to build this intelligent robotic system by bridging the gap between cloud native development and embedded development using VX, the VXWorks RTOS with containers on it. Now that enables the cloud native guys to develop their applications and deploy them in a container. And in theory, uh, the embedded guys can still have their real time operating system running there in a deterministic fashion. Um, however, if you are an embedded developer, you typically develop code until it works and then never touch it again. Like you step away from the keyboard, right? It's, it's, it's working. We don't want it to have anything to do with touching that ever again. Now we're in a context at this point where we're going to be updating this system for sure. You know, that's what the cloud native guys are doing. They're developing applications and adding new features that are gonna be deployed in these containers and updated probably more than once. So how static is the system? Does it have to be um, if for, in order for this architecture to work or does it at all? Well, like you said, traditionally, these robot systems were very static. And once it worked and was tuned for particular software and hardware, you didn't change it. And you certainly um, didn't try to run it on other <laughs> robots. Um, but with this new intelligent system paradigm, you want to be able to make those changes during the life of the robot. And you also want to be able to um, add new functionality that may not have been there when you initially designed it. And so that's a big challenge in being able to not only deploy new software down there, but also make sure that you manage it appropriately and it doesn't interfere with services that are already there. So one of the ideas that I'm sure people have popping into their head right now is I've heard of containers before and I've heard of Linux before. So why can't I just use Linux in this system? You know, the there, there are versions of embedded Linux and the cloud guys are familiar with Linux. So why don't we just use Linux here instead of a, an RTOS? Well, Linux is a great operating system for embedded and WindRiver even provides WindRiver Linux to our customers for those use cases where it fits. When you're looking at things like hard real time and safety certification, then it's very difficult, um, if not impossible to actually produce um, a Linux device that's capable of meeting those requirements. And that's really where VXWorks shines and can provide you with the hard real time capabilities and the software certifiability across all sorts of industries like um, aviation, industrial, medical, et cetera. Okay, so some of the embedded developers now are taking a deep breath. Whew, we don't have to worry about Linux, even if it is embedded Linux. Now the cloud native enterprise IT type developers, they're sweating the fact that they're gonna be working in a real time operating system environment, right? Uh, they don't. They haven't used that type of environment probably before, they, nor do they really want to get involved with the ins and outs of it. Um, that's what the beauty of containers provides, but still you're developing software that's gonna be running in this context on this intelligent robotic system. So what out there and what do you at Wind River in particular provide to sort of ease that transition into this type of build? Well, a lot of uh, traditional embedded development involved a custom IDE and custom tools and needing to really build the RTOS from the ground up. What we wanted to be able to provide was um, the ability to use the tools that people are already familiar with and use a software development kit for VXWorks in order to build the application without changing your work. So what does that SDK mean for um, a cloud native developer? Don't change your workflow at all. You're just coding like you're in the cloud on some VM. Well, a lot of cloud native developers like to use tools like VS Code. So WindRiver has created WindRiver Studio extension for VS Code to actually let you download an SDK and build applications within VS Code for the VXWorks operating system. Really, can you, can you give us a look at that? Sure, I'd be happy to. So if we launch VS Code, 
you'll see we already have the WinDriver Studio extension for VS Code installed. And what this lets us do is download a number of SDKs on our device, on our machine that we can use to, to build an application. Moreover, this actually gives us the ability to run VxWorks in a virtual machine locally. So if we go and add a QMU connection, we can actually launch VxWorks right here on this development machine. Then if we want to go and create a new application, we can go into the, the project space and create a new Windrow application project. We can choose that pre-built SDK and choose to make a real-time process using CMake as our build system. From here, this sets us up with a template and hello world C file. So if we now pull in some new code, we can choose a dining philosopher's example, which many people in the real-time industry may be familiar with. And this really represents the super loop that someone might be using in a real-time system. So if we copy this into the rtp.c file. What this is going to do is um, create a number of different threads, and they're each going to try to grab a semaphore. And there are more threads than semaphores, so each thread is going to have to take its turn to, to take that semaphore and um, wait for one of the other threads to give it up. So if we go ahead and build this project, it's now using the VxWorks SDK to compile this as an RTP for VxWorks. And then we can go and we can add a launch configuration and use that QMU simulator to actually launch this RTP. So here the real-time process is being launched inside of QMU, and this is the output from the demo application. So this allows the application developer to do all of their work, and then once they're happy with their application, they can either commit the code to their source code repository or, and then have someone else create a container for them, or they can go and create the container themselves and push it to a container registry where someone can then pull it down to the robot. All right, Rob, that's all really cool, but um, we're now to the point where we're gonna have to be updating this thing. And we all know about firmware over the updates and fallback, but in this, in this particular instance, um, that is of, extra importance. So what are some of the concerns when you're trying to update these containers? You know, how does VxWorks facilitate that? Well, with a lot of the updates that you see in traditional robotics, they're actually updating the entire image at one time. The difference here is you're able to now update individual applications. And if you're trying to do this over the air, you can actually push the container to some container registry um, and then VxWorks can connect to that container registry using TLS. And this serves two purposes. First off, it means that no one can listen in on that conversation, but you can also make sure that you're only grabbing these containers from a source that you trust. So you're not running some other code on your robot. Once you've pulled that down, you don't even need to deploy the container right away. If the robot's in the middle of an important task, you can actually download the container in the background without affecting the performance of the system and then wait for that opportune moment to actually shut down the previous version of the software and then start up the next container. And that action can be taken without affecting other things running in the system. Well, I we're building an intelligent robot, but what if I have many intelligent robots and I need to update them? Well, that's where using the containers helps you keep all of the software running across all those robots in sync. So you could imagine if they're running an AI or ML um, model, they might be gathering new data, which trains a new model. And then you want to be able to deploy that model to all of your robots. And using the container technology, you can keep an inventory of what was running there before and make sure that all those robots are updated with the new container. That's pretty slick. Now. Here's another question. What if you are running multiple containers, which I assume you probably are in a build like this, that need to communicate with one another? 
And what does that look like? Well, cloud native engineers know that making sure to keep the right version of the microservices um, together is very important because if you update one microservice and you don't update the other and the API is changed, then problems can happen. So in this type of environment, if you're using something like ROS2 where you have different services all running across your robots talking to each other, um, you can use this container technology to make sure that you update all the containers to the correct version all at the same time so you don't get that version skewed. And moreover, one thing you might consider doing is if you have services that um, you want to update in one unit, instead of having a separate container for each service, you could all put these services in the same container so that you ensure that they get updated at the same time. That sounds very reminiscent of ROS2, which uh, is a robot operating system. And I know we're going to be using ROS2 in the later episodes of this series. Why are we using an operating system on top of an operating system? Well, ROS2 is the robot operating system. And what it does is provide all of the APIs and the framework for building robots. But it doesn't actually run directly on the hardware. It still needs an operating system to run on. A lot of people use Linux for that, but with ROS2, one of the key tenants of the redesign was real-time performance. So we're going to show how running ROS2 on VxWorks would actually allow you to use the ROS2 framework on in an environment that might require hard real-time or safety certification. That's fantastic. But before we jump into that episode, if people are interested in learning more about VxWorks SDK, where can they go? Well, you can find out more on windriver.com or you can reach out to someone in the Windriver product management or field engineering and they'd be happy to give you more details. Also, if you want to visit labs.windriver.com, we have a number of pre-built VxWorks SDKs available for download.